Welcome everybody. Today we're going to learn how to do file management on the command line in Linux. We're going to learn how to create and remove both files and folders. So we have creating and removing of files and folders. And then globbing, which is just a word that I love. But it's basically just the whole star dot star concept that you've probably been using in every operating system you've ever used. But it's called globbing and we're going to learn how to do that, especially when it comes to deleting files. So let's go and learn the various things that we're going to do. We're first going to talk about how to manipulate files. And to do that, we can use the touch command, which creates an empty file. Now, that's kind of a concept that doesn't make a whole lot of sense in a lot of other operating systems. Like, I don't think there's such a thing as just creating an empty file in Windows. Maybe there is. But nonetheless, in Linux, if you touch it, it kind of makes an entry in the file allocation table. But the file itself is zero length. So it's just like saving a spot on the file system for your actual file. Uh, CP is short for copy, MV is short for move, and RM is short for remove. Now, why are the commands kind of cryptic? Well, these commands have actually been around since the days of Unix, way back when, that, that Linux gets its ancestry from. So these are commands that people thought it was easier to type CP than copy or something like that. <laughs> anyway, they've stuck around. They're, they're not going anywhere. These are the commands that we use. Uh, when we do folders, a lot of the commands work the same, but there are a few different things. Rather than using touch to create a file, you use a command called mkdir, or make dir, make directory, and this will make a directory. So you just mkdir and then the name of the directory or folder that you want to make, and it makes it. Uh, to copy a folder, now you can use copy just like you do with a file and say, CP like one file to another file. But if it's a folder and there's things in that folder, you have to use the dash capital R flag because that's recursive and it'll copy all of the things inside of the folder. If you try to copy a folder full of items without the dash minus R flag, it'll fail out. It'll say it can't do that because there's you know, it's not an empty folder. Um, MV works the same for folders as it does for files. And then to remove a directory, we use M or RMDIR. Well, oh, I said a lot of letters there. I'm going to try that again. RMDIR for remove directory. Now, this command only works if the directory is empty. So you have to empty all the contents out of the folder, including hidden files and folders, before RMDIR works. Generally, if you're going to erase a folder, you'll actually just use a recursive tool. You'll say RM minus R, or it can be lowercase or capital, it doesn't matter. Generally, people use lowercase here, and you'll often see the command RM minus RF, and the F just means force and don't ask me. So this is kind of like the super ninja double Chinese throwing star tool of destruction when it comes to the Linux file system. RM minus RF will remove files and folders recursively because of the R flag, and it won't even ask for confirmation before it just deletes it and it'll just force everything to be deleted. So this is a very powerful and dangerous command, but it's something that people use a lot of times to get rid of a folder full of files because RMDIR, again, only works if that folder is empty. So this is something that, honestly, you don't use very often, which is kind of funny. I, I generally use RMDIR if I want to check to see if there's anything inside of a folder. So I'll say, you know, RMDIR this folder, and then if it disappears, I know that there was nothing in there worth saving anyway. And if it says, you know, I can't because the folder's not empty, then I'll go in and see what's in there and eventually just use RM minus RF to, to do that. Anyway, let's go to the command line and actually do some of these things. I, I mentioned copy minus R over here as well because we talked about that for folders. But let's go to the command line and actually do some of these things. It's really not difficult. It's something that we do in almost every Linux-related nugget, and now we're just kind of defining our terms so you know what to do. So here we are on our Ubuntu command line, and I just made a folder called Sandbox, and I went inside there so that we're not deleting our system files on our home directory. And in here, I've done a couple things. I've created a folder, two folders, named folder one, folder two, and I've created a file called file.txt. If we do ls minus l, you'll see that this file.txt is that zero length file that I talked about. There's nothing in there, even though it says it's a text file, it's completely empty. Now we could create another one if we say touch file2.txt and then do ls minus l we'll see we have another one here file2.txt again it's zero length but if we wanted to edit it say this is now a file of course it was a file before it just had zero length now you'll see though it has data in it now nothing changed apart from we've added data to the existing file but that's the whole zero length file thing when you touch when you touch a file it's just that it creates an empty file or it updates the modification time but that's a whole different nugget altogether so that's how you create a file um, i've created these folders and if we say ls folder one you'll see there's a bunch of text files in there ls folder two and there's one file in there now what i wanted to do is demonstrate some things. So we can say rm 
file.txt, and then if we do ls minus l, you'll see that file is gone. We can say cp file2 file1.txt, so we're copying file1 to file2. And now we have a copy, you'll see it's the same file length, so it just copied that file to a file called file1. Now if we try to say copy folder1 to folder3, it's going to say I can't copy a folder, but if we did copy minus capital R folder1 folder3, then we have a copy of that folder, including if we look inside folder 3, it has all of the files that were in folder 1 as well. So we can recursively copy a folder just by using that minus R flag. And it doesn't really give us a good error. You notice here when I said copy folder 1 to folder 3, it, it would be nice if it would have said something like directory not empty, I can't copy, but it just says omitting directory, which is a little frustrating. So anyway, that capital R flag means recursive and it copied all the things in the folder. If we try to delete a folder, rmdir folder 3, uh, it says it's not empty. So let's go into folder 3, type ls, we'll see these are the files that we have. Now we could just go rm one at a time and say rm text one dot txt, rm text two dot txt, or we could do something called globbing. Now we could say rm star dot txt. And then we type ls and you'll see it removed everything that was txt, but that text three is actually a doc file, so it didn't delete that. Now if we wanted to, touch text one dot txt, touch text two dot txt, just to get us back where we were. So we have those three files in here again. If we just did rm star, that's the globbing going on, but now instead of specifying uh, all the all the files with a dot txt at the end, now we're just saying all the files. So if we do this, press enter, type ls, you see it's completely empty. So now if we type cd dot dot, so we're back in the sandbox folder, we can type rm dir, folder 3, and it will allow us to delete it because it was empty. But we could have done the same thing here. Inside folder 2, you'll see there's a file in there, so it won't let us delete the folder. But we could do rm minus r folder 2, and now you'll see, boom, it's gone. It deleted it even though there was stuff in that folder. The rm with the recursive flag is very powerful, and it would allow us to do that. Uh, let's see, we could move something. Usually, if you're thinking about this, you can rename something. So instead of saying rename file one, we would say move file one to file three.txt. And then what it's done is it's moved it from the file one location to a file three location. The file itself is the same, but it effectively renamed it to something else. Now we could move it into another folder. We could say move file two into folder one. And now see inside folder one, we have file 2, text 1, text 2, text 3. So it moved it from there into there. Huh? See, type ls. See, it's no longer in this current folder that we're in right now. Anyway, these are a whole bunch of tools. You can you can make some text files or other files and try to play with them and, and try that globbing stuff to see what works, what doesn't work. If there's one thing I hope you take away from this lesson, though, is that rm minus rf star is a very dangerous thing because, as you can see, it deletes everything in the folder. <laughs> All right, so that's basically how to manage files inside Linux on the command line. The tools themselves are pretty basic as long as you know what the shortcuts here, like CP, MV, RM, what they stand for. MKDIR you can use to make folders. Uh, generally, this RMDIR is not how you remove folders. You can only do that if it's an empty folder. And this RM minus RF or RM minus R is a very powerful, powerful tool that you have to be careful with. File management in Linux is really not that difficult, and once you play around with it, it it's becomes second nature. You just automatically do it. Your fingers know before your brain even thinks about it. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.